It's July 3rd, 1863, the most famous day in the Battle of Gettysburg. We're here at the southern end of the battlefield. Behind me is famous Big Round Top, and to the right of it is a smaller hill that doesn't look much like a hill called Bushman's Hill. In the morning of the 3rd, Judson Kilpatrick, who commanded a cavalry division, brought one of his two brigades down here and put them up on Bushman's Hill. In that brigade was the 18th Pennsylvania Cavalry, the 1st West Virginia Cavalry, and the 1st Vermont Cavalry. They stayed up on that hill watching the goings on to the north that included Pickett's Charge. And when the battle to most people seemed over, then Kilpatrick went into action. We're now at the foot of Bushman's Hill, a steep and very rocky eminence, not a place to be riding horses down. Behind me is a very familiar statue, the statue of Major William Wells, 1st Vermont Cavalry. There's a replica of this statue in Burlington's Battery Park. Late on the 3rd of July, after all the action took place to the north, Judson Kilpatrick decided that he had a chance to roll up the Confederate line from south to north, and he decides to make a cavalry attack. His initial attack will come down this hill behind me. It will consist of Pennsylvania and West Virginia cavalry, and they will ride out into the woods and fields ahead of me to attack the Confederates there, and there were plenty of them. The stone walls, the fences that you see today at Gettysburg, thanks to the accuracy of the National Park, are usually in the places where they were at the time of the battle. I'm sitting here along the base of Bushman's Hill, looking out at farm fields owned by a family named Slider. Judson Kilpatrick decided that he should have his men attack through those fields against the southern end of the Confederate line. But there were Texas infantry and Alabama infantry, and they rose up and fired volleys. There was brisk fighting as the Union soldiers broke through that line. But then there were more infantry to the north, and soon these attacking soldiers were under artillery fire from up around the Slider Farm and from over near the Emmitsburg Road. Soon, the West Virginians and the Pennsylvanians were in retreat and they rolled all the way back here and back up onto Bushman Hill. But Kill Cavalry Kilpatrick, that was his nickname, wasn't through by any means. He was going to roll up that Confederate line and now he ordered Brigade Commander Elon Farnsworth to take the 1st Vermont Cavalry and try again. Farnsworth said, I'm not so sure this can be done. There's a lot of Confederates out there. The ground isn't good. Boulders out there. Kilpatrick said, well, take a look. And Farnsworth rode out there and scouted. And when he came back, he said, no, I don't think it can be done. Kilpatrick said, you're going to do it. Farnsworth said it would be suicidal. Kilpatrick said something to affect that he tested Farnsworth's honor and courage, and Farnsworth said, all right, I'll do it, and he took command of the charge that would be made by the Vermonters. To make the charge, the Vermonters formed their 600 men into three battalions. One was commanded by the regimental commander from Danville, Addison Preston. One battalion commanded by William Wells, and one battalion, the largest, commanded by Captain Henry Parsons from St. Albans. Addison Preston brought his battalion down, and they lined up, dismounted along this fence and stone wall that's adjacent to it. They would provide covering fire. Now Wells and Parsons would try to break through to the Slider Farm, and hopefully even north to Devil's Den. The order was given, down the hill the Vermonters came, 
And as soon as they went into that field, they were hit too by heavy fire from the Texans and Alabamians. But on they went. We're looking down on the slider farm from the high ground that leads up toward the Emmitsburg Road. Into the fields around the slider farm came riding the Vermonters under Captain Parsons and Major Wells. Taking fire all the time from small arms, there was even some hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then they came under fire from artillery. Artillery by the Emmitsburg Road, artillery to the north up near Devil's Den. It became hopeless, a melee, and the Vermonters decided it was time to get away. Some came riding in this direction, then going south back toward Bushman's Hill. Wells and Farnsworth headed east to the other slider field, hoping to get out that way, riding toward Little Round Top. After the wild fighting around the slider farm, the Vermonters' attack began to disintegrate. Farnsworth reached the stone wall, leaped his horse over it, and as he did so, he was hit by a fusillade of Confederate bullets. And down he went. The shots came from over at the base of Round Top, and they were delivered by some tough soldiers. The men of William C. Oates, 15th Alabama, who the previous day had won fame with a valiant attempt to take Little Round Top from Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain's 20th Maine. Farnsworth was down and mortally wounded. The Confederates came over to him, saw that he was severely wounded. Elon Farnsworth was gone, and the Vermonters were saddened. The Vermonters thought the world of Elon Farnsworth. Oh yes, he was a Michigander. Oh yes, he had enlisted in an Illinois outfit. But after he led their brigade, they came to learn that he was fearless and a great cavalry commander. And he had just been promoted to Brigadier General two days before he died. In 1889, the Vermonters, veterans of the cavalry regiment, came back to Gettysburg and dedicated a monument to themselves right here on the spot where Farnsworth died. Judson Kilpatrick got the Vermonters blame for the debacle here, this useless, deadly cavalry charge. But he even came to Vermont well after the war and was given a hero's welcome at a reunion in Cambridge, Vermont. But the Vermonters' cost of all this had been high. 65 Vermonters became casualties that day in that cavalry charge. About 20 of them died. Some 30 of them ended up in rebel prisons where some of more of them passed away. With the tragic end of Kilpatrick's charge and Farnsworth dead, the fighting at Gettysburg comes to an end. Three days, including the fighting west of town Little Round Top, Big Round Top, the Peach Orchard Cemetery Ridge, it all ends here. Lee would stay in position for another day and then quietly in the night begin his retreat back to Virginia, admitting defeat, going back to fight another day and soon the Vermont Cavalry and the other Vermont units would be in pursuit with the victorious Army of the Potomac.